Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at using the followability gem to implement blocking as a feature. If you're not familiar, we've covered the followability gem before quite a few times on the channel. It has a bunch of useful uh, social functionality like the ability to send uh, follow or friend requests, uh, check who you're following and unfollow people. Uh, but it also includes a small little module for blocking users and checking who uh, you've been blocked by. And the reason we're covering this, if you don't know, congratulations, you probably have a life, uh, but just to fill you in, apparently Twitter's planning on removing the blocking feature. Uh, who knows why? There's plenty of snarky comments I could make, but I feel like they've all been made before and they're kind of just doing it for negative press coverage because it still helps grow their brand. But okay, how's this actually gonna work? We can come over to the user's index and we can check who has blocked us. So we can see here, John's blocked us. So I could block him, uh, but I've uh, only implemented one directional uh, blocking. So th this isn't gonna accomplish anything. I could come in here and block other users. Uh, that's fine. But in the case of John, it, I've already been blocked. So there's nothing else to check here. You just check if you've been blocked by them. And if you have, then maybe also don't show your posts to them. I don't know, however you wanna implement it. In terms of actually setting this up, pretty simple stuff, uh, but I do wanna show you what this looks like if I check on John's profile. So you can see here, it just says, oops, there's nothing here. Uh, but if we go over to this user's profile, we can see that John actually has 10 posts. I just can't see them because I've been blocked by him. Similarly, if John signs in with uh, john at doe.com and a password of password, uh, he'll be able to unblock Dean and then without refreshing, you can see that Dean can now see his profile. I can go ahead and block him again and you can see that it works just fine. So let's go ahead and let's do this and maybe make sure that text changes, but that's why we have demos. Uh, so to get started, I'm actually gonna do a F1. We're gonna do a Rails new uh, video with a dash J of ES build, a dash C of bootstrap, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to CD into it and run a code dot. Now, if you're not familiar with these speed runs, they're not to be taken seriously. It's just a bit of a joke. Uh, that I like to do just to see how quickly we can get stuff done uh, so that you can hopefully walk away feeling a bit more inspired to do some of these features that you've probably been putting off for too long now. Okay, so now that that's done, I can go ahead and move the VS Code window over there, hopefully. Uh, let's grab this. Let's grab this and let's get started. So we need to add a couple gems. We're gonna do bundle add faker, devise and followability. We're adding faker for fake data users through devise and blocking through followability. Let's go ahead and let's do a Rails G devise colon install to install devise. And we can do a Rails G devise uh, user command to generate our user model. We can then do a Rails G followability colon install command to do that. We then need a controller for our users. So we'll say Rails G controller users with an index and a show action. And then the final thing we need to do is a Rails G scaffold for our post with a title, a body of type text, a user colon references. Go ahead and run that. You can then do a DB colon migrate command to migrate our database. Let's now come into our user model real quick to add followability, which we just do by saying followability. And then we want this to has many posts dependent destroy and we're now done in our user model. This is all we need to do our blocking. Let's now come into our seeds file real quick because we need to create a bunch of seeded data. Let's start by uh, destroying our users in our posts if they already exist. Then let's go ahead and let's create three device users. We'll say Dean, John, and Jane with the email and passwords respectively. After we do that, we will have uh, Dean block John and we'll have Jane block Dean so that we can make sure that Dean can unblock John and that Dean can't block Jane. Uh, of course, you could always implement it a different way, but you get the idea. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and create our, our like additional users that we can actually test with. So we'll say, all right, create five users using the faker gem for the emails and just a password of password. We can then go ahead and create a couple posts. So for each of our users, which we have three users plus these five is eight, we'll create 10 posts each. So we're creating 80 posts total with a faker title and body. Uh, and then let's just arbitrarily have some of those users we created block other users just like that. Let's now do a db colon seed to seed our database. This should work just fine unless I've messed something up, but it seems like I haven't. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do a gem install foreman because I have a proc file due to ES build. So I have to run a bin slash dev with foreman. And now I should be able to go over to uh, localhost port 3000 and nothing should blow up. Let's come into our routes real quick. In our routes, there's a couple of things we're gonna to have to change. The first one is I don't like having these two user routes here. Instead of doing an index and a show, I'm gonna do a resources for the users with only the index and the show. I also want to have a 
uh, post for blocking the users, which I'm going to do right here. This is going to go to post users ID block. It's going to go to the users controller block action as the block user path. And if we try and use this, you're going to see it's still not going to work quite right. Uh, but I do want to add one more route here, which is going to be our users index. So the reason why this isn't going to work, if we come over to localhost port 3000, it takes us to our users index and we can go into our app our uh, views, our users, and our index page real quick. Uh, in here, we want to do a quick check if the user is signed in question mark. If they are, we want to do a logout link. Else we want to do the login and sign up links. Uh, we do need to change this because we're in Rails 7. We need this to be data turbo method colon colon delete, just like that. Save this, come over here and refresh. Now, if I click on login, you'll see it takes us to the user show page. You've probably run into this before. The reason why is we're going to users slash sign in and all routes that are users slash something are gonna to go to this resources users for the show page. The way you can get the device routes to still exist is to put device above this user's resource. You do then have to restrict your users if you're like using a friendly ID slug. Uh, you have to restrict it so that you can't have a user with the username of sign in created because then they won't have a profile. So if you have those restricted routes that you're doing here with device, you also want to restrict the usernames that can be created. But okay, let's go ahead and let's sign in with dnetexample.com. Okay, cool. Now let's come into our users controller real quick. In our users controller, we'll just set this up to have a before action to authenticate the user to make sure the user signed in. Then in our index, we wanna grab all the users except for the current user. Now you've probably seen this before and there's a good chance you're already typing an angry comment, but calm down. If we go over to my fourth tab, you can see that in Rails 7, they added an option where you can use excluding instead. So now instead of doing this where dot not ID equals whatever, you can actually just use excluding and pass in whatever you want to. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna comment this out. I'm gonna hit F11. Uh, and then we can just say at users equals user dot excluding the current user because we're already signed in so we can do this. This will give us all of our users except for the current users. So if I come in here and I refresh now and we come down to our index page, in our index page we can iterate through all of those users. So we'll just do this real fast. For each of these users, we want to have the user email. Then we want to have a link to block that user, which we're going to do with a big chunk of code here, but it's not that scary, I promise. The way this is going to work is you're going to say you're going to have a link to the block user path that we created. We're going to pass in the user a data with a turbo method of post and then a do block and an end block. So this is all the text that's going to be inside this link. We then have a span with a class of btn btn dash primary and then we do a check to see if the current user has blocked this user. If they have, we change the text to say unblock. Otherwise, we change this text to say block. And then finally down here, we can do a quick little uh, setup where after this end, we can do a link to show the user's profile and we can do a thing that says, have they blocked you? And then we just do the inverse of this check where we say, if the user has blocked the current user, then this will return true. So now if we come over here and we refresh, we can see all of the users here except for the current user. And I can emphasize this by putting an HR after our sign in links. So you can see here the first user account we see is John, where uh, we no longer see Dean at example.com like we would have if we didn't have this excluding right here. But okay, that's going to take care of this section. Now let's take a look at actually implementing this. So if we click on unblock, you'll see nothing happens. So we have to go back into the user's controller and we have to actually implement this unblock action. Implementing this is pretty easy. We'll just come down here. We'll say this has a def block where the at user is the user dot find by params ID. Alternatively, you can do something like at user equals user dot uh, find by the params dot fetch ID, I think is another one that's been making the rounds on Twitter recently. Uh, but okay, we can say current user dot block to the at user. If they have, then we want to do an unblock. Otherwise, they haven't blocked the user yet, so we want to do a block. And then once we're done with this, to make the text update, we can just do a redirect to the root path. Although you are gonna to wanna to change this if you have like a block button on the user's profile, for example. But okay, that takes care of that. Now let's come into the user's show page to finish up. And the only thing we really wanna do in here is just say uh, at, or at, at user.email is uh, displayed in H1, then a H3 with the, uh, the post text. And then we just do a check if the at posts are empty. If they are, we say, oops, there's nothing here. Else we do a at post.h do post with the post.title. And the reason why we do this is because now in the user's controller, where we grab the user, we can actually say at user equals user.find params ID. 
And then we can do a at posts equals uh, if the user has blocked the current user, just return an empty array so that when they go here, they just see, oops, there's nothing here because they've been blocked and not necessarily because there's no posts. Else we just return the at user.posts. And now you can see we have two sections where we're doing this at user.find. So let's do a private def user, sorry, def set user, right? And then we can just do at user equals user.find with a before action to set the user only for the show and the block. And now we can get rid of both of these to clean up our code a little bit. And now let's come over here and let's refresh, click on show for John. You can see, we can see that just fine. Now Jane has blocked us, so we shouldn't see anything, which we don't. But if we go incognito, we can see that Jane can see, or that you can see all of Jane's posts still. So that's still working. And then finally we can unblock John. We can try to block Jane, but that won't work because Jane's already blocked us. So if we wanted to have the inverse here, there is actually a check you can do where you can just say if the at user has blocked the user or if the current user has, or sorry, if the current user is uh, blocked by the at user, I think, at user. Oops, sorry, I think I this logic backwards. It should be if at user is blocked by the current user, right? Something like that. If the user's blocked them or if they're blocked by, and now it's a bi-directional thing where you also can't see their posts if you block them. And then you could do something similar here where you just include it for the at users. But I'm gonna go ahead and stop the timer because uh, I've already implemented everything I had in the demo. Anyways, that's uh, gonna do it for this one. Hopefully you got something out of this. Maybe you uh, learned something, maybe you didn't. Maybe you're just feeling inspired or you've just had your time wasted, in which case uh, my condolences. But that's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.